Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers here. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And today I've got my little guy over here. This is Rian. Um, and Rian is about four and a half months old. And um, he's just going to hang out with me because whew, the topic of today's video is autism and autism spectrum disorders, which really is about this. It's about this. It's about a child's brain. So I know that this is a very emotional topic. I know it is an awful, awful thing uh, for a whole family, a whole family to have an autism or autism spectrum child. I know how difficult it is from a management perspective. I am a pediatric surgeon. I take care of a number of patients on the spectrum, and it can be very challenging. So let's break this down and be as objective and pragmatic as possible. We're not going to talk about the treatment of autism. We're going to talk about prevention to understand what it is. And, and folks, autism is a, a very, very simple conceptual thing to understand. And I know it's been made very, very complex. But if you look at a child's brain, the brain really has Two, two compartments to it. Think of the brain like being a subdivision in a city. You've got all the houses, okay, which is the gray matter, which is where the thinking happens, where memory gets stored, where things happen. But then you've got the roads that connect the different houses, the different subdivisions, and form the city. So you've got the buildings which are gray matter, where people are housed, where they think, where they do things, and then you've got the white matter, which are the roads, the cables. The other way to think about it is, and I love this description, is to think about it like a, the old switchboard operators, I don't know if you remember them, uh, where you had all the telephones connected by wires coming into a central station, and then you had somebody uh, sitting at a switchboard plugging in wires into, to connect different telephones. And the telephones are like the gray matter in the brain and the white matter are the wires being plugged in. Now, can you think of someone sitting at that switchboard going crazy, plugging in uh, different phones that are ringing off the hook all the time? And then suddenly somebody comes along and pulls all the wires out. All the phones are ringing, but nobody can talk to each other because there are no wires connecting them. And folks, that's autism. That's autism. Autism and the spectrum disorders are abnormalities of the white matter of the brain. The white matter that connects the left side to the right side and connects the different zones of the gray matter so that it can, the brain can function as a unit. So that you have incoming sensations and outgoing motor function. I have to be able to feel in order to pick something up. I have to be able to see that. I have to have tactile. All of that stuff is highly, highly complex trafficking back and forth between different parts of my brain in order to be able to do even simple movements. That's how complex the brain and the nervous system is. And folks, when you break down the white matter of the brain, the white matter consists of two types of cells. It consists of the axons, which are these long, think of a wire. It's the copper in the wire or the aluminum in the wire, which is the axon going from a neuron from a brain cell outward. And then around that is insulation. So that the, the message, the electricity doesn't travel wildly. And the insulating cells are called Schwann cells. And the Schwann cells are um, highly protective lipid oriented cells that insulate, because lipid is a great insulator, insulate the axon so that the message can travel chemically very, very fast, like electricity, down that wire. Okay, that's the way that messages are relayed instantaneously. So, how does this get screwed up? In a baby's brain, what's happening over here? And while Rion is four and a half months old, oh, <laughs> Big uh, while Rian is four and a half months old, the brain starts to develop between three and four weeks of gestation. 
starts as a neural crest and then the brain begins to develop. Before most women who weren't planned even knew they were pregnant, before that first, well, I haven't had my period for a little while happens, the human brain is already being formed. Gray and white matter is starting to develop. Now, here's the incredible thing, and this thing makes us human. Human beings are the only mammals where the human brain is not completely structurally formed at the time of birth. The bizarre thing is that our brains, and if you look at Rian's body, his head is about one third of his entire body. My head, actually it's smaller even <laughs> than normal. The normal should be eight to one. I'm probably about 12 to one in my ratio of my brain to my body. That's why I'm a surgeon. Not much up there. Be that as it may, the human brain is so enormous in a baby that it is bigger than the birth canal. So if the human brain were fully formed like all other mammals at the time of birth, women would not be able to have birth naturally. Now, Rian was born by C-section for other reasons, but therefore the mammalian human brain continues to develop structurally after birth. And that's a very, very important aspect to this. So for the first thousand days, for the first approximately four to five years of birth, the human brain continues to develop structurally. Obviously, it grows and changes for many, many years after that. But the structural aspects of the white matter goes from almost right after inception all the way through to about four to five years of age. Then you got what you got. And during that time, that is the time that autism evolves, autism spectrum disorders. And autism spectrum disorders are a, an anatomical abnormality of white matter development. Now, what do you need to develop white matter? As I said before, the Schwann cells and the white matter, the insulation, is fat. Fat. And the two types of fat that we absolutely need, the single most important fat, the fat that human beings cannot produce, are the three and the six omega fatty acids. We have to consume those in our diet. We have to consume those in our diet. And they primarily come from plant sources. They are highly concentrated in animals like fish, especially smaller fish. That's what we call the fish oil or the krill oil. Three and six omega fatty acids are the only fatty acids that the human body cannot make. The other part that the human body, the human brain depends on is saturated fatty acids. Saturated just means that they don't have any double bonds. And these are usually very long structural fatty acids that get formed into phospholipids, which are two layers of fatty acids um, attached with it to a phosphatidyl group that goes into the structural development of all cells, but particularly in the brain cells. We need that saturated fat. We need monounsaturated fat. And you know what else, folks? Cholesterol. Cholesterol. The human brain has huge amounts of cholesterol. While my brain is only one-eighth or one-twelfth of my entire body size, one-fifth of all the cholesterol in my body is in the human brain. And cholesterol is essential to create membrane fluidity of those brain cells and also to create uh, um, anchorage for certain proteins. So that's the membranes of the outside of the cells of the brain, as well as uh, their insulating factor, and then also the organelles within that that rapidly are able to break down energy. Now, we do form a lot of fat in the human brain. The brain can convert sugar to fat for structural purposes, and it can use ketones. Ketones are tiny little fractions of fat that readily cross the blood-brain barrier, as does sugar, because those long molecules find it difficult to cross the blood-brain barrier. If you do not eat the essential fatty acids, 3 omega and 6 omega fatty acids, you as an adult, and in particularly de your developing baby, is running at, a, at a, um, uh, a 3 and 6 omega fatty acid deficit, which directly affects the development of the white matter. And if you think about a whole bunch of wires that have been stripped of their insulation, that, folks, is what autism looks like. 
What autism looks like is that telephone switchboard where all the wires have been pulled out or they're just plugged in somewhat randomly and they're not correct connecting the correct telephone telephones to each other. And autism is caused by a lack of adequate saturated fat in the human diet, lipophobia. It is caused by a lack of three and six omega fatty acids in the maternal diet and in the baby's early diet. And it is caused by a lack of available cholesterol and ketone bodies. You see, folks, when you convert sugar to fat, and the brain is actually able to do that. We didn't think it was, but in small amounts, the brain can produce certain fatty acids. But the fatty acids are 16 and 18 carbon chain longs. Very, very uh, uh, short chain, long chain fatty acids. Palmitic acid and oleic acid, which are the saturated fats that come from the conversion of sugar. We need other types of fat in the human brain. And that can only come from eating fat, saturated fat in our diet, primarily from animal sources, and being in ketosis so that those ketones can rapidly go across the blood-brain barrier in this little guy's brain and be converted and built into healthy fats by the human body. So autism is related directly, directly, to a high carbohydrate, low fat diet, which we call the standard American diet. When I was in medical school, folks, autism spectrum disorders were very, very, very unusual. Not because we didn't recognize them, but because they weren't occurring. Of course, we saw them from time to time. But maybe one in 15,000, one in 20,000 in the 70s and 80s when I was at medical school. Now, the 2019 numbers were 1 in 49 kids. 2 out of 100 kids have spectrum disorders. A massive transformation. And it isn't because we're getting vaccines. or We got vaccinated in the 80s. Same vaccines. Measles, mumps, rubella, polio, smallpox. Got the same. I've got the marks from those vaccines. So do all the kids. And still do. It's not a change in vaccination, folks. And I don't want to go down that debate, okay? Oh, it's this, it's Jimmy. It is until you correct, until you correct the saturated fat component of your diet and the omega-3 and omega-6 fats in your diet, until we do that, as a species, we are going to continue to encounter autism spectrum disorders because of white matter maldevelopment in the child's brain up to the age of five years of age. Same applies down, downstream to, autism, to uh, uh, Alzheimer's and dementia type disorders. That's a talk for another day. But understand this, folks. I will take on anybody, anybody out there, anybody out there that is willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me that saturated fat and 3 and 6 omega fatty acids, that animal fat is not essential to human brain development. It is the consumption of animals that made us human and it is essential for healthy human brain development. I, I don't want you to be out there and beating yourself and blame yourself. We, it is society, it is our societal constraints that have misled us down this road. So what have we done for this little guy? Well, first of all, Janae, my wife, was on a fully ketogenic diet, nearly completely carnivore. And you can go to her Instagram site, it's called Carb Addiction Mom, and see what she eats. And you can look at the fact that we feed her. We started out breastfeeding Rian after he was born. So in the early development, Rian was developed on a highly ketogenic, high fat, high saturated fat, primarily animal protein diet. And Janae took fish oil every day, actually krill oil, added three and six omega fatty acids to her diet every day. She also took a multivitamin vitamin, a uh, prenatal vitamin, multivitamin with very high levels of certain vitamins like folate uh, for, again, for adequate brain and, and tissue development. Now, after birth, we had to deal with something. We desperately wanted Rian to be breastfed, and he was early on. But as you've seen probably on our uh, uh, video channel, Janae had an awful time with po postpartum depression. And as part of that, we decided to stop breastfeeding. 
which was a tragedy for this young man. So how did we accommodate to that? Because unfortunately, if you look at the formulas out there, they're all absolute shit. That's my medical word for them. They're shit. They're made of soybeans and they're made of a plant-based formula. They do not have adequate saturated fat. So what this little guy's been on is both goat's milk and cow's milk cream. Heavy cream to add the saturated fat. And every two or three days, I take one of those krill oil, uh, um, fish oil uh, tablets that Janae was on pre-pregnancy. And I spike it and I put it into a day's worth of his, um, of his food. And we eat that. At four months of age, this little young man started sucking on steak, started eating eggs, started eating animal products. He's my little carnivore. If you go on our, on our Instagram site, you'll see him eating certain meat products. He sucks the juices out of it. He gets the fat out of that. We've used ghee now in his chicken, in his steak uh, to fatten that up. He gets a ton of fat. He gets his three and six omega fatty acids. And you know what? He's an experiment in progress. Because you don't see autism in the first few weeks, of first few months of life. You see it at two, three, four, five years of age. Sometimes even later when the penny drops. So we're doing this. We're not experimenting on our child. We know this is a best practice. But follow us over time. Follow us over time and we'll see what our N of 1 experiment does with this young man's brain. I can tell you so far, he's been completely on target or ahead of target with his milestones. Every parent wants their kids to be... No, his milestones have been absolutely fine. No cause for concern. But please, folks, please, folks, whatever your beliefs are on other causes of autism, eat fat if you're pregnant. In fact, start to eat fat before you decide to get pregnant so that you plan it ahead of time. But eat fat and feed your baby's fat. This guy has never seen a Cheerio, has never seen a goldfish, has never seen fruit. In fact, he hasn't even seen vegetables. Are we going to give him vegetables? Sure we are at some stage. Cream spinach, something like that. But this little guy is eating meat. Why? Because if your brain doesn't develop properly, it won't. The rest of your body can always catch up, but your brain can't. And I know it's going to be tough for you out there having this discussion inside your own head if you have an autistic child. It's not your fault. It's not a fault thing at all. But please, 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 let's address the scourge and the rapid rise in autism spectrum disorders. I want to see this go back up to the 1 in 15,000 or higher range. Not down and down like it has every couple of years. From 1 in 60 to now 1 in 49. Let's reverse that. Let's eat fat. Let's eat real meat. Let's eat fish. Let's eat poultry with a fat on it. I hope this helps you, future mothers. I hope this helps you to raise your children right. Leave comments in the comment section. Please. But don't troll. Don't be a reactive idiot that acts in an emotional way. I don't care if you agree or disagree with me, but bring your facts, not your emotions. I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this video, but it is so, so important. I've staked the most precious thing that I have in my life, in our lives, our future, our baby, on this principle, and I know it to be true. Good luck out there. Leave comments. Thank you.